This is Joseph Coco with Nata Soup Studio. I'm here with Dylan Banks. We normally do these interviews at conventions, but uh, we personally know Dylan, and he produces some great art. He's actually in the video game industry uh, as an independent developer, or rather artist. Um, if you could introduce yourself, Dylan. Uh, my name is Dylan Banks. Uh, I'm a 3D artist and illustrator. I'm an illustrator first, I should say. Um, I like to work on video games uh, uh, and all kinds of other art. Okay. And how did you get started in art? Uh, you went to UNC Charlotte for uh, undergrad, correct? Yeah, well, I got a degree, uh, BFA illustration there. Um, and I, I mean, I've been drawing my whole life. Uh, it's just something I've always enjoyed doing. Yeah. Uh, so what, what drew you to art, do you think? Uh, was it video games to start with, or the... Yes. Okay. Definitely. Well, video games, cartoons, you know, the same. I started out just like a lot of other, you know, nerdy people. <laughs> Anime, video games, made me want to draw, you know, draw my favorite characters and that kind of thing. And yeah. I sort of get, started getting more traditionally trained and, you know, did more things. I don't know. I guess. <laughs> and did you see yourself going into video game development? Was it something that you had actually hoped you would start doing professionally? Or you yes. were just like, well, I like art and video games are cool and maybe one day they'll come together, but I just want to be an artist. Um, I mean, I, I had times where I wanted to get in other venues of art, and I still have interest in other venues of art, but I, I've always wanted to make video games my whole life, I think. Uh, ever since I was a kid, um, I've always been interested in video games. Before anything else, I would say, I mean, of course, art probably first, first. but the, uh, my main interest is out of art video games. Okay. So, yeah. uh, is that why you ended up going to college for art? Or did you, like, did you think, th there wasn't really an independent, for viewers who aren't familiar, there wasn't really much of an independent game developers uh, at when we were younger. So did you see yeah. us going to college as your bridge into like the AAA gaming sort of industry, or it was you felt like you needed to learn more in order to become a professional artist? Uh, both, I could say. Um, okay. Uh, I did want to learn more about illustration in general. I mean, there's plenty of things to learn about art that are interesting. Lots of things, yeah. different yeah. ways to go. But I, personally, I mean, I, I, there was a time where I wanted to do comics for a while, and I, I'd still think I could enjoy that. Uh, a lot of work. Though. Yeah. A lot of respect for comic artists. Um, and I, but I really wanted to create more of an ex, like a experience that you could play and or interact with. So I think that's why I got drawn draw more to working on video games, I would say. Right. And so I mean, my plan was, I think, I, I, later on, the more I went to college, the more I realized that's what I wanted to do. You know, the more I, when I, when I first got there, I had no idea what I was doing. I think that's a lot of people's experience getting into college. You know, you think you know, but you don't. And then yeah. I, you know, kind of went and explored everything and found what I wanted to do. I mean, there there was a video game developers club there that I got involved with for a while, and that exposed me more to the side of things and to indie gaming and what you can do as an artist for indie gaming. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, can you speak a little bit more to how similar comics are in video games, specifically in like the development phase? Uh, how many comics have have you made? Like, not professional comics necessarily, but comics that you you wouldn't feel embarrassed to show anyone. Let's say. Uh, like I, I've made a few comic panels and strips and stuff. I've never made. Oh, here's a whole comic book. I've yeah, never sure. Done that, but I've made short stories and things like that. Um, all mostly based around the same characters and plot. And I did that all in a class at UNC Charlotte, as a matter of fact. Um, okay. I don't know. You could say like five or six short comics. Um, yeah. And I, I, that's when I sort of started going towards making more video game related things after getting exposed to that. Just you know, because I. The thing that I, the most in common thing I would say though is like sort of storyboarding. That really helps with video gaming. If thinking about scenes in that kind of way when it comes to like the cinematic part of video games and character design is another thing that you can compare because you know comic books you don't you can have outlandish characters and same thing with video games you know. Yeah, you certainly have a lot of stories and those sort of things in comics. You can push boundaries more than in more expensive media like movies and things like that. Although, I mean, a lot of video games, certainly AAA titles, are sometimes more expensive than blockbuster movies. So, yes, it's true. Uh, but, I mean, people don't really have a whole lot of voice in those mediums. So, speaking of which, you've gone more towards the indie publishing route. Is that something that you've chosen to do so that you have more artistic say in what you're producing? Or is that just the way that game developers get 
broken into the industry at this point? Um, I don't. I mean, I think so. Uh, a lot of people go into AAA gaming before doing anything indie. I think that's happened. I, 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 the reason I did it was because I wanted more artistic control and I wanted to be able to make my vision of something or something that I had direct say in. You know. Yeah. I didn't want to be fitting someone else's mold with what I was doing. I wanted to have my own idea and have it made. You know. Sure. And uh, indie gaming is really the venue for that, I would say, because, I mean, I don't know from experience, but I've read and heard a lot that being an artist... Designed by committee sort of thing? Yeah, and it's just, yeah. it can be brutal, and the turnover rate's pretty harsh, in my understanding, for artists and the AAA gaming industry, concept artists, and probably other kinds as well. But, um, I, so I, I guess I got directed more towards that, and I, I met a lot of you know intelligent people in college that had similar interests and just sort of grew from there. Okay. And what kind of games are you looking at making? Go over some of, uh, I, I know you don't have uh, many completed projects at this point, but can you go over some of the uh, ideas you had, how they came about, um, who you've worked on them with, and just uh, a quick uh, introduction to, to what you've been doing over the past couple of years? Um, okay. Well, well, most of all the game stuff I've done is I've worked with a brilliant programmer named Rustin Wolleen, um, and I met him at the aforementioned gaming development club at UNC Charlotte. Sure. He's a programmer and uh, we had a lot of similar ideas and kind of, you know, had a lot of the same thoughts about things and started working together. Uh, we first started off doing game jams together. Uh, our first probably real interactive game we made was, uh, it's called, uh, well, I don't think we ever actually named it, so, but it was a... Yeah, just describe it. It was a horror game, a 2D platforming horror game where you're on a ship. Uh, I'm sure I can supply some art for this, some video clips maybe even. Yeah, we'll definitely um, bring them up if we can get our hands on those. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, you you were the... Um, it was sort of going to be like a psychological horror kind of game in 2D. Um, and you're on this ship. And uh, we were inspired a lot by PT, I should say. Now, the, the, the would have been Silent Hill game that will never be, I, I guess. Right. Sadly. Um, <laughs> and um, so we kind of went down this route of you know, going down these hallways that seem to repeat and lead to nothing, and this sort of, I don't want to say psychedelic, but, you know, bizarre, you know, surreal. Otherworldly, kind Yeah, kinda. you're on this sort of fishing trawler, and you go into your cabin, and you would have to solve a puzzle and fight enemies, and once you got to the end, you would be dropped right back at the beginning, and if you, you would have achieved something that would have allowed you to continue on to the next goal, that was kind of... The concept and right, so like nice the like the looping designs. hall and PT essentially. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And um, I had some nice monster designs that I could show you, and uh, I had I got to make some nice puppeted two D sprite animations, which was fun. Um, yeah, that was a, that was a fun project. That was the first one we sort of started on. And then after that, we got more into working on VR games, mostly for the HTC Vive, and I've been doing a lot more three D art assets for that. Um, we've made a few projects in that venue as well, um, so that, yeah, that's been a lot of fun too. Okay, and you're using Unity to create yes. both the uh, VR game and the... Uh, um... Yeah, that's our main uh, platform. Okay, and you're using Blender to create the 3D uh, uh, elements for the VR game, but what what uh, programs, what software are we using to create uh, art assets for the Unity uh, horror platformer? Okay, we use Blender for, yeah, Blender's correct for uh, the 3D games. In 2D, we used, uh, I'll use Photoshop, of course. That's my, my main medium, I would say. That's probably the program I'm best at, Photoshop, with the Wacom tablet and stylus. Sure. Drawing that way. Um, and then we also used a, a program called a Sprite Illuminator um, to make UV maps and stuff, lighting that was dynamic on sprites, which that was a lot of fun for me. I like doing that. Yeah. Um, what else did we use? Uh... We had some other programs that my names are slipping my mind right now, but sure. those are the two biggest ones, I would say. Yeah, that you spent most of your time in. Mm. So if somebody wanted to break into game development, say they had a background in comic arts or maybe in some light animation things, how would you recommend that they uh, go about pursuing that? Um, obviously, they probably don't have any programming experience, so maybe something like what you did, reach out to a, yes. a software developer and see if they have any interest. Go find people... Not not even someone that's even established, but I would recommend going find someone that's looking to be established, someone in the same situation as you, someone that wants to make something. Right. And someone that has similar interests in you. That, that can be difficult. Um, you know, a college campus is a good place for that, which is that's where I found people I work with. Um, yeah. 
uh, and just find, you know, programming, especially finding programmers is very important because uh, they're a very important part of making video games, I would say. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I mean, any other types of creative people that also have similar interests are also nice to meet. People you can share ideas with. Um, people that want to make something similar to you. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So, you do you think you have to know somebody, or would you recommend just reaching out to, to general? So, you, you think going to like groups like the one you suggested or is yeah. that a common thing at, at universities and Game development clubs uh, yeah i would think so uh, i mean to mine i don't know if they're at every university but um i mean I, when i went there i didn't know anybody i went there looking for people to meet and uh it worked out for me um and i mean so yeah i would i, I didn't i didn't know anybody before and if you do know somebody already that's helpful you know <laughs> maybe go talk to them uh but if you don't, don't be afraid to go out and reach out to people because people, developers, they're always looking for artists. And uh, the other thing I would say is um, working for free is something that's going to come up, you know. Yeah. While you're in college, I think it can be acceptable, especially if it's a project that both of you are working on in your spare time for free. But uh, don't ever be taken advantage of. That's all I'm, that's, you know, as an artist, I right. always Right, so if, if something feels wrong, you should... Maybe reconsider. Yeah, don't, don't, if, if someone's getting paid, you should also, if you're making work for a paid project, you know. For sure. Yeah. But I mean, if it's just something you're doing for fun, for, you know, developing your skills with other people, that's also perfectly acceptable, you know. It's, we'll probably turn into money one day if you keep at it, you know, so. Okay. So, speaking of kind of doing something in your spare time. I know you have a full-time job and thankfully yes. that's in the artist industry. So you're able to hone your skills at work and hone your skills working on personal projects. But yeah. what about for the people who say just have a regular coffee shop job or um, maybe might be looking to supplement some of their income through game development? Um, how, would, how would you recommend someone who's as busy as yourself essentially, but might not be able to hone their skills at work uh, go about trying to break into the independent game development industry or industry might be the wrong word, but independent game development realm. So like if someone you're saying if someone's busy with work. Yeah. They... Yeah. Like uh, come, come home from work, you know, busting tables or whatnot. And you, you would like to get started on a game, but at the same time you also need to learn to draw better. I mean, it's all about time management at that point. I would say, you know, it's, if you really want to meet a goal, you got to just, make the time for it, you know, make it a priority in your life. Um, it, I mean, you always, you gotta, you can't just be homeless, you know, you gotta have a job, you gotta make money. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, not everybody wants to just give you money because you draw money. It's not, <laughs> well, I wish it would. The internet doesn't yeah. just throw money at people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can draw pretty pictures, but as I mean, as long, if, if, if it's marketable, I think as an artist, there's always ways to market yourself, even within your trade. The, like freelance work, there's always people wanting all kinds of things, as long as you're willing to bend to the needs of the customer. And I mean, okay, there's always ways to make money that way. But I mean, I, I coffee shop jobs that definitely helps. Uh, any kind of part time job that helps. Full time jobs, which I work a full time job and work on video games in my spare time. It can be exhausting, but um, I mean, that's all dependent on your situation personally. You know, if, if you want to have that kind of you know, it, it, it's not impossible. It's difficult, but not impossible. Okay. Yeah. Um, so can you recommend any communities that people look into if they're looking at joining uh, game development sort of communities just to try to get their feet wet with things if they have questions that come up? Um, or even just to find a, a fellow uh, artist or programmer to help them? I know there's plenty of online communities that will do game jams, like weekend game jams over the internet. Sure. And, uh, there's ways to pe meet people like that um, if you don't have access to like a college campus or something. Yeah. There's also things like that. The internet. There's lots of websites to do that sort of thing. But um, you're thinking in person is probably best. So. I mean, I always think in person is best because that's the best way to communicate, the quickest way, you know, and yeah. easiest way to share ideas. But I mean, if that's not a possibility, then I would definitely look to the internet, look to uh, whatever you can find. I mean. You don't have to be a college student to wander into a college campus and meet people necessarily. I mean, that helps though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, 
the internet. So just look around for game gems, basically, and you'll be able to find communities built mm -hmm. around those game gems. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to ask a little bit about marketing and distribution. I know you haven't launched a full product necessarily yet, but uh, what are some of your thoughts on that? I know marketing has gotten a lot easier for independent game developers, partially because less plays are so prominent, um, yeah. and partially just because people are more willing to take a try on a name they haven't heard of. They've either gotten sick of AAA titles or they're drawn to how cheap and innovative uh, indie games are. So what are some recommendations you have from what you've learned about uh, the independent game uh, development sphere and how to kind of reach out to people to get them to try your game and ultimately hopefully sell your game and where you can host it and that sort of thing? Well, again, that's another place the internet's great for uh, marketing. YouTube, like you mentioned. Um, you know, there's lots of people that are willing to look at these things nowadays. You know, there's lots of communities looking to try new independent games. Um, as for marketing, yeah, like you said, we haven't really gotten to that stage yet. But, um, yeah. uh, you know, social media, um, you know, Tumblr, communities, Twitter, uh, is a great place to show things to people. Um, so just start building a following on those and hopefully yeah. they'll be listening when you talk about your game? Yeah, that's. I think that would be the right approach, definitely. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty similar to comics in general. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a lot of creative endeavors, really. Mm -hmm. If you can get a following, that's a, that's a good thing to have. <laughs> okay. I imagine a lot of people are probably interested in uh, VR aspects since it's just so hot right now. All yeah. these companies are coming out with VR headsets. Um, how did you decide on the Vive, and how did you uh, get started? Um, is there anything, is, is VR a special case, or is it from a artistic side similar to regular 3D games? Um, the main thing about VR games that's different to me is, like, I'm a character artist, I like to draw characters, and, um, if you are a VR, in a VR game, you are the main character, so there's not really, I mean, you can maybe draw some hands and give yourself some personality that yeah, way. Yeah, there's still debates about that, whether yeah, you should be able to see your own hands and feet. It's a new venue, there's, like, there's really no rules yet. I mean, there, and I don't think there ever should be rules in these kind of things, but, you know what I mean, there's no standards really set for anything. Um, okay. Not a lot of them, anyway. Um, and uh, it, making art assets is, I mean, for the most part, it's the same as any 3D game. Uh, you know, make a turnaround, make a model from it, animate it, so forth. Um, but uh, the only thing that would be different, really, is the main character part, I would say. And uh, know, that's really it about that. I don't know. Okay. Um, so if, if somebody wants to test out making a VR game, yeah, from our perspective, it's, it's really just... Basically the same thing then? Well, I mean, playing the game is much different, of course. Uh, and yeah, but what, from an art design perspective, I know a lot of people are worried about nausea, so is there anything that, I mean, you recommend in terms of, like, color palettes or, like, boldness of outlines? or Is there any honestly, recommendations on that in terms of making uh, it so that it's more palatable to the player? Uh, having a good frame rate and um, I yeah, of course. motion blur can be a little frightening, I think. For people so having a good <laughs> frame rate, is that more on the programmer side or is it yeah. the artist side to one, make simplistic models? One thing I would say is important about modeling and making art for VR is that if you're making weapons or making anything that's going to be in your hand, it's going to be right in front of your face. Um, yeah. And so you got to really put detail into it because it's you, you, you want... If you're going to be looking right here at something, you really want to to be something interesting. You know, you don't want to have it be boring or low poly or whatever. I mean, don't go crazy, but make it look you know nicer than you would a normal gun. You're going to see is a few pixels on the screen. You know. Sure, I imagine Prey is going to do that. They're coming out with a VR. I think I know they're remaking Prey. It's going to be VR, right? I haven't heard of this. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, they, they put a lot of detail in their gun, as far as I can recall. So mm -hmm. I imagine the the new version of Prey is probably going to have an even more detailed gun if it's got a VR support. Uh, for one little project we were working on, I got to make a pretty interesting, it was pretty fun for me, like a detailed sort of cowboy style revolver, like similar to like a Colt 45, I would say. But sure. I tried to just exaggerate everything as much as possible and still keep it look sort of realistic, but that was fun. Um, but yeah, detail is important. So what's and, the uh, what's the pipeline like for working on a game? Would you say like maybe for a comic, uh, a lot of people will storyboard out the uh, a chapter, or the I guess they start with writing a script, and some people will write a script for the whole thing, and then they'll go to storyboards for a chapter, or a couple chapters, or things like that. Like what's the pipeline like for game development? Because uh, I know a lot of people try to have a working build at all times. Is that something that you would recommend, where you have temporary assets all around uh or 
um, and you just you start with simple things and then make it more complicated or are you just like I want to create a finished character and then I'll put that character in and so forth well we definitely have like programmer art things that are just placeholders for now just to make sure this or that works you know um, yeah but for the general pipeline I mean come up with your basic idea your basic concept you try to expand on it you know um, and I would say depending on the kind of game you're trying to make plot can be important or not you know depending what you're kind of if it's like a multiplayer game plot journalism is important for like competitive games and stuff like that right but that's all you know that's whatever you're trying to do um but yeah getting your basic idea which could or could not include plot um and then maybe illustrating some game mechanics that are going to be integral like to the what the main idea of how the game will work and thinking about that and what kind of obstacles that can bring up and i mean that can be reflected also in the art side of things, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example of that. Uh, you know, how you're going to reload your gun or your, how you're going to see yourself in a game or something like that. Um, but yeah, so it basically starts with basic idea and then you just, you know, I, I like to, when it finally gets to actually making the art, I'll do the turnarounds and the 3D models and that's that's the fun part for me. But the beginning is also fun, just coming up with the ideas. And generally, we'll start like brainstorming and just tossing things out there and see what sticks, you know, and what kind of. We'll, we'll probably start with game mechanics first that are interesting, and then the aesthetic, the visuals that you think could match with it, you know, or that match with it well. Or, and then that sometimes will come up and bring out more game mechanics that fit in with that idea and so forth, sort of gets the ball rolling. And, yeah. Sure. So oh, I, I know for your your two major projects, they haven't been story heavy, even though your platformer has been very thematic heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, would you say that, uh, so just under the assumption that an independent uh, game development team is two people, an artist and a programmer, and that's what often, often happens to be the case, would you say that it's assumed that the programmer is the writer or the artist is the writer? Or is it just whoever steps up and takes that role takes that role and it switches between teams. I mean, in my experience personally, it's sort of a, a mishmash, you know, where we both come up with ideas together. Um, okay. Uh, but I mean, that uh, I guess it all depends on the people you're working with. It's all sort of a personal dynamic. Um, yeah, I mean, and I certainly not every indie game development team is composed of a programmer and an artist. It just seems to be a common sort of scenario if you look at some of the more popular titles for sure i don't know about well i'd imagine the artists would you know generally be more in, invested in the plot it's it sort of goes with that mentality a little more but i mean that's not necessarily always true um okay in my experience i've you know i've, I've made intricate plots for game ideas and it's been a lot of fun um and that, that can really actually help well obviously it would help come up with more visual ideas if you have a world you're putting them in you know that really does help when you have a you've established this, you know, landscape that you're placing everything in and that gives you clues on what things should look like and what, you know. Yeah, it gives the art direction and it gives a programmer an idea of what to focus on to build a functioning game, basically. Yeah. <laughs> a game that someone will enjoy and then later you can add on the, the fluffs. Yeah. So how do you decide um, what uh, initially to work on when you're when you're like when you decide on a game concept like where do you start um with our first basic needs to have something that you can see work like a, you know your weapon your uh, your environment um an enemy if that's the kind of game you're making or like a puzzle or you know just generally that and what what i like to do very first is just try to illustrate a, make a drawing of sort of how everything you know will look in the world and how what what kind of look we're going to for and then maybe make some smaller illustrations of you know oh this is how you throw something this is how the throw mechanic so a basic design document yeah essentially um, okay yeah and then from there you just start filling in the yeah. some of the holes I mean what would uh, is it just dependent on what project what you're going to tackle next yeah and I mean you do that and you deal with all the unexpected stuff you're not going to think of because there's going to be issues that you're like oh i didn't think about that well what do we do about this problem and then you, you know. are you trying to solve those before they become big problems or you just oh, march on ahead and say hopefully that'll get resolved at some point no you gotta, <laughs> you gotta recognize everything you gotta see the whole picture you know <laughs> 
can't just fix one problem and hope the other one that fixes itself. Okay. And would you have any um, advice for someone who's considering moving from the comics industry uh, into the game development industry? Um, let's see. Uh, like, w if um, if I were to apply to a game developer, could I use comics as part of my portfolio or resume? Uh, if you're trying to do storyboarding, maybe. Um, okay. Because that's a whole field. Um, yeah, certainly AAA games are have a lot of cutscenes and those require storyboards. And I mean, that's, that will definitely apply. Um, character design is kind of what I've always been more interested in, in like weapon design and just right. making the objects themselves in the game. Um, and I, what, what's the title for that in general? Is there, cause I know like, you know, modelers have names and riggers have names. So character like, artists. okay. So it's just a character artist. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. what I say. I mean, weapons artists. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what terminology. Sure. Uh, so what's so you do think that in most circumstances a comic artist might be able to include uh, some of their work in their portfolio if they're applying for a game development job or yeah. uh, a game artist? Cinematic sort of things, you know. I mean, a lot of comics have a lot of cinematic things, you know, good dynamic shots and things like that. That's important, you know. Atmosphere is very important. Uh, and uh, yeah. being able to show that you have the skills to make a world, that's helpful. Um because, I mean, a lot of video games, you got you know, to make... Imagine of, yeah, that yeah. doesn't just look like every other video game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And any other advice to, to someone who's looking at making the jump over? Um, keep your eyes open. Look around for people that might be different than you. Uh, but, you know, that's... Even if you don't, like, necessarily connect with someone completely, uh, that doesn't mean... Like, uh, you look outside of your friend group is what I'm trying to say. You look outside of your yeah. your bubble and look out for other types of people because you don't... You need lots of different kinds of ideas when you're making video games. You need, uh, you know, more analytical people and creative people together, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. And where can we find your work online? Uh, DylanBanks.Squarespace.com is my main website. I also have a Tumblr at DylanBanks.Tumblr.com. Okay. Uh, those are my two main places. And when can we, do you, do you have a, a very loose launch date in, in hopes for your VR game that we can be looking forward to? Uh, Maybe late this year? The future. The uh, future. Who knows? We'll find out. All right. Well, thank you, Dylan. It's been great talking to you. Uh, thank you.